and if you disagree with him, you're a bigot and blah, 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 which is, you know, we, we never had any of this. But he actually saw the cut of the film, and there's a black actress who does an incredible job in the movie, and she gets killed. I mean, the bad guys kill her. He went insane. He decided that because of Black Lives Matter, he can't kill a black woman in his movie. He just can't. He's not going to kill a black woman. So the director went to the actress and said, are you cool with this scene? And the black actress said, I love this scene. This is why I accepted the part. I I certainly am fine being killed in the movie. But the producer, I'm not going to be responsible for killing a black woman in my movie. And ended up costing the movie a lot of money and a lot of time to go reshoot an ending where she lives. And then it was so bad they had to throw it out. So it was total waste of money and time. I don't think we would have seen something like that a long time ago. I, I don't remember ever seeing anything remotely like this, that you can't kill a protected class in your film, even if it goes along with the story. It's the script you bought. It's the movie you bought. It's the movie you funded and the movie you cast. And now all of a sudden, you know, some social justice nonsense comes into play. So well, it's I think really that's made things different. <laughs> That's really patronizing, isn't it? When you think about it, it's not. It's not social justice. It's really just patronizing, uh, racist essentialism, isn't it? Well, if I'm an actress and I don't care what color I am, and I've chosen to take a part, and I'm being paid to play a part in a movie, and I chose it creatively because it's what I want to do as an actress, I think it's kind of <laughs> ridiculous for someone to come in and say because I'm an, in a protected class they can't shoot me in the movie. So, so I, he's I denying. Was floored. Yeah. I was floored. So, so he is denying uh, this person of color's agency to make her own acting decisions and perform the roles in which she wishes uh, to fill. So he's, oh, abs he's absolutely... Yeah, not only patronizing, he's actually standing in the way of her fulfilling her artistic uh, abilities. Yeah, and it's a great scene. It's one of the greatest scenes in the movie. The actress is extraordinary. She's beautiful. She's funny. She's talented. And, you know, altering the scene for some... And so that's, I think, you know, and we spoke about this the other day, you know, Hollywood's become more about the messaging than the art a lot of times. And that's where conservatives sort of fall short because we don't get it and we don't do that. Um, so, you know, it's the you can't have an Oscar if your cast isn't diverse enough. You can't have an Emmy if your cast isn't d diverse enough. When I remember growing up in Hollywood, it was about the art. It was about the material, the content. It wasn't you know, conforming it to some kind of social justice. And what I just went through was ludicrous. I mean, it was insane. Now, when you were starting out, you went from the William Morris Agency, a very prestigious agency. Then you went over, I believe you became vice president of Spielberg's Amblin Entertainment, and you did over 40 movies there. And then, then you made a decision to start your own company, didn't you, at some point? Well, somewhere along the way, I became an agent. So I was hired as somebody's assistant at Amblin, and I didn't want the job. And I kept saying, I don't care if it's Spielberg. I don't want to be someone's assistant. But I took it, the job. And then the very first day I went to work, <laughs> like my mom was like, oh, my God, you're going to work for Steven Spielberg. And I'm like, yeah, so what? You know, because you know, being 19 or 20, you think you're hot and it's no big deal. And I, I, the very first day I went to work, I'd been there for half an hour in the morning, and Michael Jackson and Steven Spielberg come walking down the hall. And they're just like, hi, how you doing? And I go running in my office, like, mom, like, this is the coolest job ever. Oh, my God. But um, I got promoted a lot. They were it, it was the most you can't describe what it's like to work around people like Stephen and Kathy Kennedy and Frank Marshall. I mean, it doesn't get any bigger than that. And to learn from them and um, just the people you meet. And it was the most extraordinary experience in the world. And at that time, America was different. There was no 9-11. Reagan was well, Reagan was Reagan still president. Yeah, I think he was still president or coming back uh, or going out. And it just, 
the country was different then, and it was extraordinary. There were only 40 people in the company, and it was great. And so I got this is the Robert Dobby five times. This is the Robert Dobby show. We're talking with Bettina Viviano, and we will. I'm Thaddeus Mercado, your guest host, and we'll be back right after this. I'm Al Simon, 91 years young. I created Balance 7 20 years ago. At 67, I went to see the doctor for the first time in my life and found out that I had medical problems. He told me that was normal for my age. I don't believe God intended us to be sick and old. I decided to find something to bring my health back. For 10 years, I studied pH and how important it is to the human system. Balance 7 gave me back what I lost by getting older. I no longer get out of bed with a joint discomfort. Balance 7 can do for you what it has done for me and many others. In three days time, you'll feel more energy, less joint discomfort and clarity of thinking. No doctor or hospital can do what Balance 7 can do for you. Balance 7 is the key to unlocking the healthy immune system. Bring your body back to balance. Order now, receive free shipping with the code word L. Go to balance7.com, that's balance7.com. Order now and get your free shipping and a free gift with your order. Go to balance7.com, Use the code word L. The smartest way for you to get the lowest prices on your plane tickets, domestic or international, is to call SmartFares first or last, but you've got to call us before you book your plane tickets. Fly anywhere in the world, fly anywhere in the U.S., and SmartFares can save you up to 75% on your plane tickets. We have the lowest airline ticket prices on over 500 airlines, and you've got a great 12-hour free cancellation window. Plus, with our live agent help you can always get fast help and fast answers so on your next trip maybe today maybe tomorrow how about right now pick up your phone and call smart fares plus save up to 75 percent in your plane reservation so call right now 800-915-2644 800-915-2644 800-915-2644 800-915-2644 what are you so happy about i'm on the pill aren't you two a bit old to worry about having more kids not her me uh you lost me there buddy Steel Man pills. Things weren't always looking up if you catch my drift, so my doctor prescribed me a little something. Like Viagra? Yeah, but that's expensive, and it wasn't covered by my insurance. Steel Man pills cost me less than three bucks a pill, and virtually the same effect. I just called and got over 40 pills for only $99. <clears throat> I have this friend who might be looking and... Well, if your friend wants some help, the consultation is free over the phone. No clinic. Steel Man pills sends it in the mail in a confidential package. I'm on it. I'm I mean, my friend will be on it. Steel Man Pills. Going the extra mile to help men with erectile dysfunction. 800-605-1683. 800-605-1683. 800-605-1683. That's 800-605-1683. Robert Davi. You know, I'm the one delivering the message. Not receiving it. Hi, welcome back to the Robert Davi Show. I'm your guest host, Thaddeus McCotter. With us today is a friend of Robert, Bettina Viviano. She is a film and television producer, literary manager, and consummate political activist. Before we get into what made you become politically active, Bettina, I just want to go into some of the things. You started your own agency after you worked with people like Spielberg and others, worked at the William Morris Agency. You started your own agency. What was that like in that period of time out there for you, especially being a younger woman trying to do, trying to make your own way out in Hollywood? So I wasn't an agent. I was a manager, and there's kind of a big difference. Um, yeah. Technically, when you're an agent, you can't produce movies. 
And so being a manager, you can produce movies. So that's a that was a big distinction for me. And I started doing it. I had a um, John Davis, who I love, is a wonderful person, whose father, Marvin Davis, owned Fox Studio. Uh, I had a, an overall producing deal with John, and uh, he was great. He would give young people these first look producing deals, you know, and you'd basically be sharecropping on the John Davis, you know, uh, massive, you know, production entity trying to find projects and producing them with John and you'd get, you know, an office and a business card. Um, And I decided because I had been an agent after I left working at Amblin, I was an agent at what is paradigm agency. Now at the time it was called major clients and, Barrett and McCartan West, and I was a literary agent. And then I didn't like being an agent because I missed the whole creative thing of working on projects. When I worked at Amblin, and you know, my real gift was I thought um, being a good story. You might know that. Um, and so I missed agent. And you were sort of just selling things and making deals. So. I became, I left being an agent, became a manager, producer, had this producing deal with John Davis, and then left John and partnered with a woman named Melinda Jason, um, and then started my company on my own. Um, So there were a couple of partnerships along the way. Um, It was, you know, I never felt different being a woman, and I remembered when I was working at Amblin, Kathy Kennedy, Steven Spielberg's producing partner, who's the heir to George Lucas's Lucasfilm and just produced the Star Wars movie. She's the biggest female producer ever. She was sort of my mentor. And I remember sitting with her one day and she was talking about the president of Columbia Pictures, Don Steele, who, God rest her soul, she unfortunately died of brain tumor, but she's a wonderful woman. But Kathy was saying, well, she's always complaining about every bad thing that happens to her is because she's a woman. And Kathy said, you can't do that because you'll make it happen. You'll manifest it. And so I've tried really hard my whole life not to look at it differently, that, um, you know, anything I don't get or anything I fail at or anything that I lose or don't get this deal or do something, it's all because I'm a woman. So I never felt differently um, about it. I just tried to put my head down and do what I did and not think about it. But, um, you know, it's it's always difficult. It's not an easy business to be in. I was just fortunate during the time when, you know, you could sell spec scripts for millions of dollars and um, scripts sold every day. You know, there'd be five scripts a day selling for lots of money. And it was actually fun. It just was always fun. Um and uh, I loved it. I loved it. And I, you know, I, of course, didn't get involved in the political stuff till way later. And that's what we'd like to touch on now. This is the Robert Davi Show. I'm your guest host, Thaddeus McCotter. We're talking to Bettina Sofia Viviano, film and television producer, literary manager, and political activist. Now, Bettina, what led you to become politically active? You mentioned it was around the 2008 campaign. So the woman that I represent now, um, who directed the movie with the producer growing nuts or being a lot of uh, she was my client at the time, and I had sold scripts of hers for millions of dollars to Ron Howard and, believe it or not, Harvey Weinstein and everybody. And she had become very well known for also a documentary that she directed. So she got this phone call from some woman that worked in the White House when Bill was Bill Clinton was president and said Hillary Clinton is suing Barack Obama for cop fraud. I believe they were suing in Nevada. 
And there's a bunch of fraud going in the, on in this Democratic primary between Hillary and Obama, and we want to make a documentary about it. And they asked E.G. to make the documentary. So she calls me up and goes, do you want to produce this documentary about caucus fraud? And I said to her, Gigi, I don't know what a senator is. I mean, I've never voted in my life. I don't know what a caucus is. I'm not a Democrat. I wasn't a Republican either. Um, I don't know. I mean, why would anybody make this movie? But it's one of those things where people tell you your life changes in one decision, one moment. I agreed to do the film. We funded ourselves. We didn't want it being paid for by anybody else. And I don't know if you remember that primary, but it was contentious. It was the ugliest thing I've seen in politics, really, ever. Even in, well, maybe the Trump stuff's been worse, but uh, it was just horrible. Um, and it was because of what I saw and doing research on what went on in the Clintons and Obamas, that I immediately became a Republican. I mean, immediately. I ran. I mean, I was crying every day. You know, when you come into something, you know, I hadn't been involved in politics at all. I believed my country didn't need me to vote because we were in, you know, I was apathetic like a lot of people are. You know, the country's in great shape, and what do they need me for? I would never do that again. I mean, I'm the first person in line when it's time to vote now because I know how important it is. But making that documentary was scary. I mean, because it was just nasty and vicious. And anybody that tells me that there's no such thing as voter fraud, honey, I've got it on film. I've got 40 hours of it, and it's Democrats accusing Democrats. So the film ran, I think, for six weeks. Allison Camerata was on Fox and Friends at the time. She's on CNN mm -hmm. now, I think. But she did the story, and she let us go for, I think, the longest time at the time that they'd continued to run one story. And they didn't let me on because I was a Republican. They wanted it to be Democrats versus Democrats. So they had a lot of the Hill delegates and Gigi and everybody on talking about all this voter fraud. And <laughs> that's what did it. I immediately became a Republican. Wow. This is the Robert Davi Show. We're talking with Bettina Viviano, a film producer, television producer, literary manager, and political activist. When we come back on the Robert Davi Show, we're going to ask Bettina where this ch momentous change to enter into politics has led her. getaway of your dreams, come to Hawaii's playground, Kaanapali Beach Resort, on the fun side of Maui, where the world comes to play. Find your spot on Kaanapali Beach with three miles of white sand, 12 resort properties, two golf courses, and two shopping centers. Enjoy the playground of Hawaii's ancient royalty. Kaanapali Beach Resort is Hawaii's original master planned destination resort and home of the Hawaii Food and Wine Festival. With views of two neighboring islands you can breathe in the land's natural beauty from your favorite resort or golf fairway. Come experience Kanapali's own special brand of Hawaiian hospitality with world-class dining, relaxing resorts, water sports, and activities of every kind. For romantic, family, and great friend getaways, discover the options of Kanapali Beach Resort, where the world comes to play. Plan your getaway today. Visit kanapaliresort.com. That's K-A-A-N-A-P-A-L-I resort.com. You order a glass of your favorite Cabernet, fresh asparagus, hollandaise on the side, a filet, medium rare. You unfurl your napkin with a flare, close your eyes, and prepare to listen. Ah, there it is. The sweet music you long to hear. The sizzle. The sizzle of a Roots Chris steak. 
The most magnificent corn-fed prime beef, broiled to perfection at 1,800 degrees. Some call it a sizzle. We call it an anthem. As the waiter approaches, you think, is this one mine or that one? Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. Like Ruth always said, life's too short to eat anywhere else. Make a reservation online at rootschris.com or by calling 800-544-0808. Have you heard about Vine to Bar chocolate? It's the winemaker's chocolate, the world's first chocolate made with well-vined Chardonnay Mark from the beautiful coastal vineyards of North America. Gently pressed grapes are harvested after juicing, dried and finely milled and carefully blended into the finest dark chocolate. The Chardonnay Mark contains highly beneficial grape nutrients, flavanols, and has a natural sweetness that flavors the luscious dark chocolate. Mouthwatering, flavorful, delectable dark chocolate goodness with Chardonnay sweetness and beneficial nutrients. And it's alcohol-free, too. It's Vine to Bar chocolate. Order some today at vinetobar.com. That's V-I-N-E-T-O-B-A-R.com. Cold ship to your door, it's Vine to Bar. Vine to Bar chocolate. Visit us at vinetobar.com. Does your current bathroom need to be updated immediately? Introducing One Day Bath and Shower Remodeling, the complete and hassle free way to get the new bathroom of your dreams in as little as one day and for as little as $1.99 a month. Yes, the experts at One Day Bath and Shower Remodeling will come to you anywhere in the country and show you all the customized options. Now you can have a brand new bathroom in as little as one day. Large or small bathrooms, if you want a new bathtub or shower installed, we can do it in as little as one day. And if you call right now, you can save $750 off your remodel. We make it easy by offering you financing as low as $199 per month. Call now to schedule your free in-home consultation. 855-525-7454 855-525-7454. That's 855-525-7454. The Robert Dobby Show. I'm Dwayne Robinson, LAPD. I'm in charge here. Not anymore. Uh, welcome back to the Robert Dobby Show. I'm your guest host, Thaddeus McCotter. With us, we have a special treat, a friend of Robert's. Bettina Sofia Viviano. She's a film and television producer, literary manager, and political activist. We've been talking with Bettina about her days in Hollywood, and now we're going to continue talking with her about the steps that she's taken to dive into the cesspool of politics. Some of the things that you've been working on, can you enlighten us about them, Bettina? Well, as far as which one, Hollywood or the... Well, I know you're very busy, and you've got a lot of irons in the fire. So why don't we start with some of the initial steps you've taken? Uh, I know you've tried to get many more people involved in the culture wars. I know that you were a friend of Andrew Breitbart and always understood the culture's downstream from politics. And I know a lot of your efforts have been to try to get conservatives to engage in the entertainment realm. Why do people, conservatives, not seem to understand that type of uh, the, the need to do so? You know, it's mind-boggling to me because way back in 2008 when we did our film, you know, it was abundantly clear to me that the media was just so powerful. The whole Obama thing was a big marketing campaign, basically. I mean, this guy is not black Jesus. Uh, you know, whatever you think of him, good, bad, or indifferent. I mean, it was silly at a certain point. It was $8 billion spent on what was a huge, you know, marketing campaign for a guy, and it worked. You know, I had gone into Trinity Church and interviewed people that knew him for 20 years um, for the film, and he wasn't the guy that we were being told he was, you know. And so I realized back then that conservatives have no version of this at all. We don't own the networks. We don't own the studios. And when you compare, oh, well, Fox is number one in news. Well, it's number one in cable news. 
it's not number one in network news. And if, you know, I've actually gone and looked at all the numbers because I go and speak about Hollywood and the media at a lot of places, and the numbers are staggering for ABC Nightly News and 60 Minutes and NBC News and CBS. You know, no, not CNN and MSNBC, but, you know, they still control so much of it. And even the example I gave you the other night of watching Law and Order SVU because I was going to be a lawyer, and in the first five minutes, the bad guy blows up a cop car. He's white. He has a uh, flag on his pickup truck. He thinks that COVID is a scam. He attended the January 6th rally, and um, he thinks the um, election was rigged. That's all in the first five minutes of Law & Order. Uh, it has 10 million viewers on NBC. And when I went running down the hall to my husband, and I was so upset by seeing that because I love that show. I said, where's the Antifa version of this? Where's the BLM? Where's them burning down Ferguson or anything else? Where is the television show, the one-hour drama? Because in all these hour dramas, because I watch Chicago Med, Chicago Fire, Chicago PD, these do very well in ratings, and they constantly get the message across that white people are bad and with the BLM stuff, and everybody's a bigot and a racist, and it's full of the social justice stuff. And that gets into people's heads. I mean, it just does. They're watching it. They think they're being entertained. But Hollywood and Democratic Party are um, merged. They're the same thing. And conservatives don't have any of that. I mean, what do we have? Newsmax and OAN, and we have Fox. We don't have Fox. I don't know. So I t was asked to start a network, and I did. And I told them at the time they hired me, if you're going to do Newsmax or OAN, don't hire me. I don't want to do news 24-7. I don't want to do podcasts. You know, basically what conservatives have – there's nothing wrong with it. I'm not bagging on it. Newsmax is great. OAN is great. Fox is great. Whatever. But it can't be all we have. It just can't. It can't be that you took a radio show and turned it into a single camera visual something and put it on a streaming platform. It's, it's just, I mean, that's not moving the needle. It's just not moving the cultural needle at all. Where's our Disney movie? It's our watching animated films with you know, things we may or may not want our kids to see. They have every right in the world, transsexuals and gay characters or whatever they want in their movies. We have every right in the world to make animated films for our kids that have other values, patriotic values and American values, other things. Um, and we don't. We have nowhere to do that. And so, to me, it just makes me scratch my head. Like, do, we, do conservatives not understand that no matter how many things, we can have every Virginia in the world, we can have Trump, we can have whatever. But the culture war, like Andrew Breitbart said, politics is downstream of culture. It's losing the culture because there's an entire party that believes erasing our history and the bad things we've done and what racist we are and our monuments and our statues and everything that's made us America, that, that's progressive. That makes us a better country. And there's, you know, half the country that doesn't feel that way, that wants to celebrate American history and our flag and our declaration and our constitution patriotic values and we have nowhere really to do that and it blows my mind because it's going to take a lot of money to do it it can't be that you take 10 million dollars and start a streaming platform that gets you nowhere i mean unless we get in my opinion unless we get it in a big way and make big movies big whatever big tv series animated films whatever i don't know we swing the culture the way they do, and they know they're doing it. They know they're doing it. Um, just like I gave you the example this morning, it's almost like they can't help themselves. You know, James Carville, thank God, came out and said this wokeism nonsense is toxic. But it has filtered into all of our entertainment. And, you know, 
I wanted to do something where we would fight back. Unfortunately, that network ended up being podcasts, <laughs> news shows, and not what I signed up for. So I'm hopeful that we can, you know, I'm trying. I know there's other people like Ben Shapiro and, you know, lots of other people who feel the way I feel and who are trying to do this because I think if we don't, our culture is sort of in bad shape. This is the Robert Davi Show. I'm Thaddeus McCotter, the guest host. We're talking with Bettina Viviano, film and television producer, literary manager, and political activist. Bettina, I know there's people like Robert, yourself, there's others like Nick Searcy that have always tried to start production companies, but we run into, as you pointed out, the fact that the the donor class just does not want to participate in this because they don't understand the need to do it necessarily, or they only see dollars and cents and not the overarching uh, societal benefit of having a cultural engagement within the culture wars itself. But also, isn't there a problem of distribution, isn't there? Even if you produce the movie, you still have to get it distributed, don't you? Yeah, and you have to get yourself in the situation where you have an enormous distribution machine um, behind you because if you don't have that, no one sees it. So it's it's a complicated mess, and, you know, like I said, I'm surprised because back in 2008, you know FOA, um, for people that don't know, that was Friends of Abe, it was Gary Sinise's private underground Hollywood conservative group that no one could talk about. You hide because if anybody found out that you worked there, you could be fired from your job. But, um, we, you know, a bunch of us tried to get put together. We even went, I think, to Trump before he even thought about running to get money to do this, and it just doesn't seem to be on the radar of the donor class for whatever This reason. is the Robert Davi Show. I'm Thaddeus McConnor talking to Bettina Viviano. We'll be back after this message. I'm Al Simon, 91 years young. I created Balance 7 20 years ago. At 67, I went to see the doctor for the first time in my life and found out that I had medical problems. He told me that was normal for my age. I don't believe God intended us to be sick and old. I decided to find something to bring my health back. For 10 years, I studied pH and how important it is to the human system. Balance 7 gave me back what I lost by getting older. I no longer get out of bed with a joint discomfort. Balance 7 can do for you what it has done for me and many others. In three days time, you'll feel more energy, less joint discomfort and clarity of thinking. No doctor or hospital can do what Balance 7 can do for you. Balance 7 is the key to unlocking the healthy immune system. Bring your body back to balance. Order now, receive free shipping with the code word AL. Go to balance7.com, that's balance7.com. Order now and get your free shipping and a free gift with your order. Go to balance7.com, Use the code word L. These are the sounds of Colombo's Italian Steakhouse and Jazz Club. Mm, look at this ribeye. Did you see that ribeye? Fantastic. Ah, incredible. This is delicious. Sausage and lentil soup. Special today. Very, very good. Look at this garlic bread. Best garlic bread I've ever had. And here's Vic Perino, owner and operator of Colombo's. A lot of the Italian recipes are my uncle's own recipes. We have a lot of people coming back for his hand-rolled lasagna. We make it basically from scratch. I think ours is exceptional. Here's Vic. On what makes Colombo's different than any other Italian restaurant. The other thing that sets us apart from other Italian restaurants is that we're an Italian steakhouse. We specialize in our steaks. Plus, there's more. We have entertainment seven nights a week. So they're coming for a lot of reasons to value. Their value per dollar that they're getting. Plus, coming into a neighborhood friendly place. That, you know, sometimes we're actually accused of being the melting pot of Eagle Rock. Colombo's in Eagle Rock on Colorado Boulevard. 323-254-9138. Manja. Let's talk about your credit cards. When you first start using them, it's a slow drip. You make charges, then more charges, then bills come, and they keep coming. When you open your statements, the floodgates come pouring in. 
you realize you have more credit card debt than you can afford, and you're barely making the minimum payments. Wouldn't it be nice to make one affordable payment and have all your credit card bills covered? Make this free call and learn our responsible way to get your credit card bills paid and under control. Sponsored by Consumer Education Services, a nonprofit organization. 800-876-3643. 800-876-3643. 800-876-3643. That's 800-876-3643. CESI is not a loan company. The establishment of a debt management plan may adversely affect your credit rating. Non-payment of debt may lead creditors to increase finance and other charges to undertake collection activity, including liquidation. Robert Davi. Another $80 million write-off. I guess it's time to start turning overhead. Welcome back to the Robert Davi Show. I'm your guest host, Thaddeus Mercader. We are talking with Bettina Sofia Viviano, film and television producer, literary manager, and political activist. And you truly are a political activist. You've been appearing all over the country to spread the message about how conservatives need to get involved in the entertainment industry, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, I've done it for a long time. I, you know, I'm very hopeful this will change um, because it's, you know, when Trump's going around saying fake news, fake news, you know, it sounds crazy, but it's true. And it's, you know, why their side of it gets away with a lot of stuff. Um, they have credibility. You know, um, people think, oh, I saw it on TV. It must be true. And until we get in the fight with them, I don't really see um, anything changing. Um, no matter how many elections. And, you know, the media runs cover for them anyway. I mean, I think the 2020 election was rather silly. And, you know, if you say that, it's a that we're in loop. So, um, but, yes, you know, I, I speak wherever anybody asks me to speak. I started that one network. I will start another one. I will keep doing it as long as uh, – as I can find a way to do it because, you know, my focus, everybody has a gift and something that, you know, uh, their voice can be used for. And we have amazing people on our side. Uh, I love all the people I've met along the way. I, it's just the disconnect between what they say we are and what we are. It, it's how is this happening? And I blame media, and I blame the fact that the RNC has no messaging. You know, when you would go to Trump rallies and you'd see Native American Indians, Eastern Indians, Venezuelans, Cubans, African Americans, Italian Americans, Hispanic Americans, Latino, everybody um, in attendance at these things. And yet I can, I'm here to tell you that they— the left genuinely believes we're all white. They genuinely believe we hate Jews, we hate black people or any people of color. And, you know, they believe we don't want black people to vote and we want to suppress. I mean, they believe it. This is not – and a, you just – you can't – Everyone always says conservatives have the best message and the worst messaging. That's absolutely true, because the truth of the matter who our side is, to me, is way more big tent than they are. Um, and people you'd see at the rallies and the joy and people hugging and happy and you know celebrating our country is such a different image than what even I see when I work in Hollywood, because— um, they genuinely think we're all the biggest racist on earth. And they yes, this is the, yeah, that's true. And I think, Bettina, one of the things you're touching on is they, they project their own insecurities and failings on other people. The left accuses you of what the left is actually doing. And I remember talking to our mutual friend Evan Syed about that. He calls it the woke supremacy. And I think that's a very apt phrase because it's all about control. They've created their own warped little ideological worldview. And they use the media and other instruments such as academia and others to try to enforce that upon the rest of the country. Fortunately, they've not necessarily been successful. Now, when we look at it and you've talked about it, 
the conservatives don't seem to understand the need to get into this. And yet you've been, thankfully, going around trying to convince people to do this. Do you think what happened in Virginia and New Jersey, those election results showing that the public really does want to get rid of the woke uh, supremacy and to return back to normality, do you think that that will help the conservative donor class understand what you're trying to do and get them to start participating on the levels that are necessary? Well, like I said, you know, when you win some elections, you think, okay, well, this is huge. This is change everything. And my husband is way more optimistic about all this. He sees this huge movement uh, away from the wokeism and everything. I just think it's two different issues. I think culture suffers every day from entertainment and news and things where we don't even have a, we don't have any skin in the game. I don't care if we have Newsmax or Fox or OAN. We just can't compete with Warner Brothers, Sony Pictures, Fox, you know, Universal. I mean, those are monolithic establishments that are all run by liberals. So, you know, it's hard for me to think, oh, everything changed now in one in Virginia. I think the MAGA movement, I think what really is the backbone of this country is not the establishment RNC and the establishment people in the Republican Party and our represent representatives who disappoint me a lot. You know, I'm a Republican. I'm not voting Democrat. I can't. I'll never will. But what I see as moving the needle on these uh, elections are the grassroots Trump voters. Um, who have, you know, I think came out big time in Virginia. Um, do I think a lot of Democrats flip? I don't know the numbers from that. You can tell me. I just think that it's a bigger problem than, you know, we want. Because, you know, on the other side, every single news outlet is saying, well, that was a white supremacist election. The white supremacists were out again. You know, yes, but Bettina. I'm, I don't want to, I might sound like I'm siding with Jimmy on this, but you have to understand they've been saying that forever. They continue to say right. it. And, and they reach a certain point where it doesn't register anymore because they know that it's been weaponized and it's a political democratic talking point. So people start to tune it out, which ironically is very dangerous for our society because real racism then gets to sneak under the tent, under the cloak of the Democrats, weaponizing the term to the point of non-existence. So I, I'm a little bit more like Jimmy, where I think that the left is going to say whatever they want. But really what it is, is the fact that Democratic policies don't work. So they have to use the racist, fascist trope, which is really projection on their part, because they can't justify the fact their policies suck. Yeah, and I and I do agree with that. And the, and the crying wolf is the biggest disgrace to uh, people of color. Because when you're right, when there are incidents of racism, and there are, it's just a fact of life. They're no by nowhere near what these people say they are. But let's say it happens. No one wants to hear about it anymore because we've all been beaten it, it, rel relentlessly that we're racist because we don't vote Democrat. And so I think it's backfiring. I think the biggest gift in life ever was Joe Biden. I mean, the guy can't even tie his shoes. I mean, we're living with a president that they're all saying, you know, had an accident with the Pope. I mean, it, it just it, it blows my mind that this guy's even in the White House. But, you know, again, I blame the media. The media managed to make tox Trump toxic and blame him from COVID and everything else. So, you know, I'll wait and see. I'm hopeful. You know, every time we win something, it's like, oh, it's backfiring. They're all coming around now. And then Joe Biden's in the White House. And, you know, well, to be honest with you, that scares me to death. Well, I do agree with you that this is one battle and the war proceeds apace. We must understand that. But I think that some, there have been significant changes within the electorate, especially uh, with all due respect to Mr. Trump. The reality is that once he got out of the way and stopped being the, the whipping boy of the left, America got to see what the progressives and the socialists and, and the woke want to do to this country, and they do not want to see it continue. I think that that's one of the things America needed to see it, and they needed to feel the consequences of their failed policies so they could understand that it wasn't Trump's mean tweets, it wasn't Trump's even demeanor. The policies were successful. 
And I think that the going back to those policies will be very helpful to the United States. And I think the vast majority of Americans are starting to realize that with every day of this malfeasance and misfeasance of the Biden administration. We've been talking here at the Robert Davi Show with Bettina Viviano, a film and television producer, literary manager, and political activist. In the short time we have left, Bettina, what would you like to tell the American people? Or at least our listeners. Oh, for- <laughs> well, I probably don't have to tell your listeners, don't overvote for a Democrat ever. Uh, for our listeners, you know, God bless everybody that's that's in the fight. This country's worth saving. It's the most amazing country in the world. There's nowhere else to go. Trust me, I've thought about it a hundred times. Where would you go? We have to save this country. And, you know, I'm honored and privileged to be in the fight with some of the nicest, most wonderful people I've ever met. And uh, let's keep going. This is the Robert Davi Show. We've been talking with Bettina Viviano, film, television producer, literary manager, and again, consummate political activist. And I just want to echo in this short time we have left as well, that this is an exceptional nation. We are a nation built upon self-evident truths And that includes the fact that your rights come from God, not the government. And in fact, Patina, one time I was talking uh, with a friend of mine, and he was having a discussion with someone from the left. And he asked this individual, he said, well, where do you think your rights come from? And the individual on the left had no answer. He was stupefied. He had no idea where his rights came from. That's insane, isn't it? And yet they want to diminish ours every single day, don't they? Well, that's the point. They don't realize they came from God, so they have no value. And in the end, if you do not recognize that your rights come from God, that can, cannot be impaired by human hand, then the government's going to step in and steal your rights. Defend them. And remember, oppose censorship. It's the first way they come after you. Especially the people. That's America to me.